Hi everyone, this is the preview lecture for lecture 6. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the Poisson equation with fixed source terms. So, in order to make a fixed source term, we had to make a depletion approximation. Yes, so depletion approximation was made, and under the such a restriction, we were able to calculate the potential. And the boundary condition was so 0 volt, 0 volt, and 0 volt for both ends. So here we have assumed that there is the gate oxide contact and gate and oxide contact and we have applied 0 volt for our phi so phi at x equal to 0 was 0 volt and also phi at x equal to a was 0 volt it was simply because we have assumed that we have applied 0 volt to the left gate and right gate so without further consideration, we just assume it. But at the end of our previous lecture, we have introduced widely accepted convention for our electrostatic potential. What was it? By electrostatic potential phi, we wanted to point out the intrinsic formidable of, of the reference material in many cases that is the silicon so so our first slide take into account that aspect so what is the value of electrostatic potential when we apply zero volt is it really zero volt or certain other uh, value which is suitable for our gate contact so that is discussed in our first slide so let's assume that we have applied 0 volt to our gate contact. However, electrostatic potential phi is not 0 volt at that point in general. Mm, how can we find the value? Since the electrostatic potential is the quantity related to the silicon intrinsic form level so we have to find out the silicon intrinsic form level so let's do it together with me so for gate metal we can define a quantity work function work function is energy difference between the vacuum level and the form level so for example when the work function is 4.3 electron volt then it simply means that the vacuum level minus formula level equal to 4.3 electron volt and please note that the formula level is regarded as just to 0 volt in our convention so from these two these two relations we can say that vacuum level in our notation becomes 4.3 electron volt so with the work function we can find out the vacuum level however what we want to know is actually not the vacuum level but silicon's intrinsic form level Fortunately, the energy difference between the vacuum level and intrinsic form level of a silicon is given and that is the material parameter of silicon. This is given by about 4.63 electron volt. So, when we assume the work function is 4.3 electron volt, then now let's draw an energy axis. This is energy and say this is the reference energy the formula level then from this case work function is 4.3 so here we have 
vacuum level that is 4.3 electron volt and from this vacuum level we can find out the intrinsic Fermi level of our silicon now when the Fermi level is regarded as a reference voltage then what is it since this is about 4.63 electron volt and that would be minus 0.33 electron volt oh so we wanted to represent minus 0.33 electron volt the intrinsic formula of silicon in this case in order to represent minus 0.33 electron volt then our electrostatic potential at that point should be positive 33 volt so with this condition we can reconstruct the case described in this slide okay the electrostatic potential is 0.33 volt okay so um i wanted to ask you a question if we have work function of 4.5 electron volt then what will happen if we have a different work function value then our EI value will be just minus 0 0.13 electron volt instead of 0.33 electron volt so from this one we can calculate the electrostatic potential of 0 0.13 volt mm -hmm. so simply speaking when you have given work function for your metal and usually we have certain values suitable for our metal used in our gate contact then from this formula we can easily calculate the boundary condition for our metal now let's revisit our previous double gate MOS case still we have assumed that we have applied 0 volt to our gate contacts but in this case now we have to set the boundary values not 0 electron volt no but the values calculated from our assumed metal work function and silicon's material parameter so this is the value we have to use when the gate voltage is 0 volt and work function is 4.3 electron volt same is applied to our right contact okay except for these modified values for our left contact and right contact everything is just the same as before then what will happen to our ax equal to b system ax equal to b system in this case we will not make any change in our a matrix because you know everything is just the same as before also when we have a look at this B vector actually it can decompose into two different parts one is related with boundary values and the others are related with source terms our source terms or um, in other words um, net charge density inside the device so when we change our boundary condition from 0 to 0 0.33 volt then only the difference occurs in here and there in our AX equal to B system only B vector is slightly changed then please solve the same problem but with different boundary conditions you can easily get the solution however my request is to solve it for 0 volt vg equal to 0 volt 
and Vg equal to 1 volt. So when you apply 1 volt, what will be the boundary condition for our uh, AX equal to B system or our double gate MOS? For gate voltage of 1 volt, instead of 0.33 volt for Vg equal to 0 volt, when we have Vg equal to 1 volt, then phi should be 1.33 volt. Also, phi at x equal to a should be 1.33 volt at Vg equal to 1 volt. So, simply speaking, when you apply certain gate voltage, then in this work function of 4.3 electron volt case, you are 0 and your A potential should be 0 0.33374 volt plus the applied gate voltage. That's it for our gate voltage. Okay, I hope that you can easily follow this modification and now assume that you have done it then what will happen what is your answer so i have prepared the desired answer when you perform your exercise uh, correctly here in this graph i have prepared two cases for vg equal to zero volt and Vg equal to 1 volt. This left one is corresponding to Vg equal to 0 volt and the right one is corresponding to 1 volt case. Oh, they look almost identical. So x-axis is a position in nanometer and I have used still a 0.5 nanometer thick oxide. Please make a comparison between these two graphs, one for 0 volt and one for 1 volt. What is the difference? Actually, except for the electrostatic potential value itself, the shape looks exactly the same. It is because when we have Vg equal to 0 volt, then we have solved just AX equal to B. Mm -hmm. And now, when we solve VG equal to 1 volt, then we have used the same A and B plus only the boundary values 1 and 1 is added to represent our increased gate voltage. So, when we increase this 1 and 1, then, then this term will just introduce global shift of potential by 1 electron volt. That's it. Our, our voltages are globally added by amount of 1 volt. So, so therefore, it is quite understandable that our two graphs look almost identical except for this global shift by amount of 1 volt. And hmm, please think about your previous depletion approximation. In order to have a personification with a fixed source term, then we had to introduce the depletion approximation. At that time, we have assumed that Electron density is nearly negligible. Also, hole density is also negligible. In the case of such a narrow uh, silicon body of 5 nanometer, this fully depleted hole that is almost always justifiable. So, it's okay. But how about the electron density? Can we justify that there is no electron at all at every case? This assumption cannot be justified for 
one volt case. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between left figure and right figure? Only, only the potential has been increased, but that makes a really big difference. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, consider. Let me just uh, draw the diagram. Like at the center point here. 3 nanometer and center point 3 nanometer we have potential around 0.32 volt also in this 1 volt applied case phi is close to 1.32 volt so from these two values please convert them in the energy scale so when we have phi equal to 0 0.32 volt, then that is just representing our intrinsic form level is minus 0.32 electron volt. Okay, now our EI is given as minus 0.32 electron volt, and you know we have formula bell as a reference energy, zero electron volt. And where do we have the conduction band minimum? So conduction band minimum is uh, located above ha almost half band gap. So we can roughly say EC is located just to 0 0.24 electron volt because the difference between conduction band minimum and intrinsic form level for silicon is around 0.56 electron volt roughly so in this case we are interested with the energy difference between EC and EF so conduction band minimum and formula band this is 0.24 electron volt approximately and still our Fermi level is far below than conduction band mm. in this case we can expect that electron density is not that much but when we have 1.32 volt then it immediately gives us intrinsic form level of minus 1.32 so what will happen so in this case our EI is no longer located in this part we have to draw it around here okay now we have EI equal to minus 1.32 electron volt EC our conduction band is just uh, located minus 0 0.76 electron volt around EC is around minus 0.76 electron volt I have uh, assumed that half band gap for our calculation so in this case the EC minus EF is no longer a positive value but it becomes 0 0.76 electron volt and its, its sign is positive so what does it mean? oh, our conduction band is far below than our formula level so we have a lot of states which are fully occupied by our electrons such a large energy cannot occur in reality so if we have really a case of this large energy then we will have a lot of electrons in conduction band so our original depletion approximation now becomes invalid so we now understand our depletion approximation is not quite valid at large gate voltage cases if we apply large electron volt then our 
electrostatic potential becomes larger and larger and electron density also becomes larger and larger. So when we have a sufficiently large electron density, then that is contradictory to our depletion approximation. So we cannot neglect our electron density any longer. So we have to switch to the general Poisson equation for our analysis. So that's the reason why now we have to consider the self-consistent solution between our electron density and the Poisson equation. Therefore, now we have to uh, establish the, the relation between electrostatic potential and electron. So we will do it in this slide and next slide. Effective density of state of the conduction band in silicon, usually denoted as NC, is um, about 2.86 times 10 to the 19 per cubic centimeter. So electron density is simply given by this rule under the Boltzmann statistics. So we can, uh, in many cases, we can use Boltzmann statistics. Of course, we can do better job with Fermi statistics. But however, for a while, just to live with the Boltzmann statistics. The electron density can be obtained by this simple rule. Simply, when our uh, formula bell is larger than conduction band minimum, we will get a lot of electrons. On the other hand, if our conduction band is much larger than our formula bell, then we will have nearly small number of electrons. Let's assume that you understand this one. Then, here we have Fermi level and here we have conduction band minimum. But we wanted to express it only in terms of electrostatic potential. How can we do that? One simple observation is hmm, in this problem, our formula level is always regarded as just a zero electron volt. When we insert this concept, then nc times the exponential just minus ec kvt. That is enough for our electron density expression. This is because we have assumed that formula bell is regarded as the reference energy. Then the next goal is to express the conduction in the minimum from the electrostatic potential. Okay, the only thing we know is intrinsic formula level. We can understand the intrinsic formula level by applying minus Q times electrostatic potential. This is simply Er, intrinsic formula level of silicon. Then, in order to reconstruct the conduction band minimum, we have to add Ec minus Ei. We need this quantity. But fortunately, the energy difference between conduction band minimum and intrinsic formula level, this quantity is just a given constant. So, so simply speaking, now we can insert this number. Nc times exponential minus sign is understood here so q phi over k b t times exponential also minus e c minus e i divided by k b t you know that the the terms like e c multiplied by exponential minus this argument 
is commonly written as the intrinsic carrier density of a silicon. So now we will arrive at an expression of Ni times exponential. So Q y divided by kbt. If we introduce a thermal voltage instead of this kbt, then we can say ni exponential phi over thermal voltage. That is the expression for electron density. Okay, so although our starting point was on expression with formula bell and conduction band minimum by applying our reference energy convention and by applying our widely adopted convention for electrostatic potential we can make a really simplified expression for our electron density let me just uh, stress it again, electron density at equilibrium under the Boltzmann statistics can be simply Ni times exponential phi over Vt. Of course, we can find a similar relation for our whole density, for example, R at certain position is simply given by Ni times exponential minus phi over vt okay so now from the previous solution of fixed source person equation now we have a certain gas for electrostatic potential why don't you just calculate the electron density from gas electrostatic potential then of course, this is simple evaluation. So when you add certain number for your phi, you will get the value for electron density. So I have prepared a MATLAB example. Except for the boundary condition, everything is just the same as before. Now we have phi calculated from uh, the depletion approximation. Although this approximation cannot be a perfect one, but anyhow, this one can start our calculation. Under the depletion approximation, we have calculated the phi. And using this phi, by using n equal to ni times exponential q phi over kbt expression, we can easily estimate the electron density. Of course, the electron density calculated from this way is not perfectly correct because, you know, our phi is obtained from the depletion approximation. So, this electron density is not perfect one, but that is uh, a good estimator for the correctness of uh, our solution. Could you please plot it by this operation in MATLAB or different uh, command file for your Python language? So then, when we apply just zero electron volt, we have the electron density something like this. This is written in per cubic centimeter scale. So this density is 10 to the 15. Yes, so 10 to the 15 per cubic centimeter can be safely neglected in modern electronics. Because, you know, um, doping density is 10 to the 18 per cubic centimeter. So it is a really small number compared with our p-type dopant density. Our depletion approximation can be justified for this Vg equal to 0 volt case. But you know, when you go to Vg equal to 1 volt, so what will happen? Then instead, instead of this number, our number should be much, much larger. So, 
please try to estimate the electron density calculated from this uh, same way. Okay, so now you have homework, but since the time is just uh, about two days, I have assigned very simple homework. So, in this uh, presentation material, I have shown just 0.5 nanometer thick oxide layer. But in this case, please use oxide thickness of 0.8 nanometer. Except for this one, please use the same parameters for your double gate structure. Just to follow our lecture, so first calculate the electrostatic potential without considering the contribution from holes and electrons. And after that, using this initial potential, please calculate the electron density by using Ni exponential phi over Bt expression. Then you will have a lot of electrons for high gate voltage. Please use the calculated electron density, recalculate the potential. So, are you with me? Then, check their difference for several gate voltages from 0 volt to 1 volt. What we can expect is, for gate voltage of 0 volt, actually, when we calculate the electron density, the number would be quite small. So even though we have included the electron density in the next step, but that will not change our potential significantly. Hmm, that's okay. But in the case of one volt, I guess that something will be happen. If you evaluate your electron density, then you will find that it is really humongous number. When you include that humongous number of electrons into your Poisson equation, then you will get much different behavior for your electrostatic potential. So please check by yourself and please give it an answer in your report. Okay, that's enough for our um, lecture 6. And see you Monday. Bye.